guys, I am back with the second video on video series on class 9 science motion and in this video we are going to talk about path length and displacement. Your mother asked you to directly go from your house to your school. But what did you do? You first went to your friend's place, then you went to another friend's place and then you went to your school. So now you felt that the school which was just 2 kilometers away from your house but you actually traveled more than 3 kilometers. So what is this 2 kilometer, the shortest distance between your house and your school and what is this more than 3 kilometers which was a different path altogether. So this is what we are going to learn in this video as we talk about path length and displacement. So let's get started. Path length. Path length is also sometimes known as distance. So uh, both the terms are used synonymously. Some people call it as display, uh, distance. Some people call it as path length. So what is this path length? It is the total distance an object travels from initial to final position. That means the entire distance which you are covering. That is why it is also known as path length. That means the entire path through which you are reaching your destination from your initial position is known as path length, right? So that is your path length. Now what is displacement? It is the shortest distance between initial and final position. So please note this point, it is the shortest distance. That means while we talk about displacement, we are not bothered about the path which was followed to reach the final position from the initial position. It is only the shortest distance from initial to final position. So let us take this example to understand the difference between path length and displacement. Let us suppose we have the same small boy once again on his cycle. So what do you see? What is the position of the boy right now? He is at his home. This is his house, right? So he is at rest. Correct? Now he starts moving. He goes from his house to this church. Correct? Now again from the church, he comes to this McDonald's. So now, what, I mean, what was the change in position of the boy? The boy was changing its position with time. First from home he reached till church. Then again from the church he reached till McDonald's. Right? So in this case, what is the total distance covered by this boy? When I say distance, I mean the entire length of the path. So what was the path followed by the boy? First he followed this path, then he followed this path, right? So this is the total path that is followed by the boy. So that means when I talk of path length, as I mentioned before, path length is the total length of the path. That means the total distance that the boy has covered from initial position to final position. What was the initial position? That means the starting point. So this was his initial position. What was the final position? McDonald's. Right? So the total path length will be, let us suppose this is point A, this is point B and this is point C. So the total path length will be AB plus BC. Right? This is AB and this is BC. So this is my path length or this is my distance. Now what will be the displacement in this case? Displacement is the shortest distance between initial and final position. So this is my initial position, this is my final position. Now what is the shortest distance between these two points? So now when I talk of displacement, I am not bothered about the path which was followed by the boy or by any object. So I am not bothered about which route this boy followed. That is it went via church. I am not bothered about that. I am only bothered about the initial position and the final position. So this is my initial, this is my final. What is the shortest distance between these two points? This is the shortest distance, right? So displacement is AC. So now you understood the difference between path length and displacement. So now if you see in a way both the quantities path length and displacement is actually talking about how the position of an object changes with time. 
right but there is a difference between the two so i hope i am able to explain you the difference between the path length and displacement correct okay now let us look at an example where path length is equal to displacement because there will be certain scenarios where your path length and displacement are the same. Let us look at one such example. Now let us suppose the boy starts from his home and he goes directly to McDonald's. Right? So now in this case, what is your distance? This is the distance because this is the path followed by the boy. So this is your distance. Right? So in this case, your path length is AB. Let me call this point as A, this point as B. Now what is the displacement in this case? Which is my initial position? This is my initial position. Which is my final position? This is my final position. And the shortest distance between initial and final position is again AB. So in this case, your path length is equal to displacement, right? Why it became same? Because in this case, the boy followed the shortest route between the initial and the final point. So whenever the object will follow the shortest path between the initial and the final point, in that case, your distance will become equal to displacement. So what did you conclude from this? The first thing is that distance, when you talk of distance, the path which is actually followed by the object matters but when you talk of displacement the path actually followed doesn't matter it is only determined by the initial and the final positions let us look at another example where your path length is not equal to zero but your displacement is equal to zero that means your distance is not zero it means the object is actually covering some distance but the net displacement comes out to be zero interesting right so let us look at this scenario let us again consider the same boy the boy again starts from his home he goes to the mcdonald's and then again comes back from the mcdonald's immediately so he reaches mcdonald's then he suddenly remembers that okay he forgot his wallet so he again goes back to this house so in this case what is your path length what is the total path covered by the boy first he reaches till here again he comes back till here that means the total distance so what is the path length in this case so let me call this as a this as b so the path length will be a b plus again a b so that means we can say twice a b two times because first he goes then he comes back so this will be the path length right now what would be the displacement in this case now in this case which is my initial position this is my initial position because he starts its, his journey from here what is his final position because he goes back again turns around and comes back here so that means his final position is also the same. So initial and final position are the same. And what is displacement? It is the dis shortest distance between initial and final position. So if your initial and final position is same, in that case your displacement will be equal to zero. Right? So you understood? So now I hope you are able to understand what is distance and what is displacement. So now that we have talked about distance and displacement, talking about scalar and vector quantities becomes a necessity because uh, explaining or understanding distance and displacement without understanding scalar and vector quantities is incomplete. So let us see what is a scalar quantity and what is a vector quantity. So when I talk of a scalar quantity, it is a quantity with magnitude alone and no direction. This is an important thing. Whenever we say a scalar quantity, that means any quantity which you can define completely only with the help of magnitude. Now, what is magnitude? Magnitude is nothing but a numerical value that defines the measure of a quantity. Now, let, us, let me take an example. Now, example of scalar quantity is path length and speed. So we'll talk about speed later. Let us take example of path length right now. For example, you have a boy standing here. Now let us suppose the boy moves, he starts moving and he reaches from point A to point B. 
Now I say that the distance covered by the boy is 10 meters. So what is this 10? 10 is a numerical value which tells me the measure of the quantity. That means it is giving me the measure of the path length. It is giving me the measure of the distance. So this 10 is the magnitude. So this 10 that is the numerical value that defines the measure of a quantity is known as magnitude. Correct? Okay. Now when I talk of a scalar quantity, you can define that quantity completely only with the magnitude. So that means if I say that uh, this boy covers a distance of 10 meters. So that's all. I mean, I am not bothered about the boy went in which direction, whether he went north or he went south or he went east. So I'm not bothered about the direction. When we are happy only with the magnitude, we call that quantity as a scalar quantity. So path length is an example of a scalar quantity. As, as you already saw that in case of path length, let us suppose if this boy starts from point A, he goes right, left, takes turns and reaches some point B. So what is your path length? This entire length of this entire path is your path length. But in this case, we are not bothered about the directions. We are not bothered about the right, lefts and turns which he took. We just are bothered about the length of this entire path. Correct? Okay. Now, when I talk of a vector quantity, we not only need magnitude, but we also need direction. So, magnitude and direction are both needed to define a vector quantity. So, example of a vector quantity is displacement. So, that means in this case, if I am talking about displacement, then I should always mention it this way that this boy moved 10 meters towards east. So that is your displacement. That is when I'm talking of displacement. So whenever it is displacement, I should, I always need to mention the direction. So we can say it in this way that distance plus direction is displacement. I mean distance along with the direction. However, distance and displacement are not always the same. So, uh, friends, please understand the difference between distance and displacement very clearly. So, distance is a scalar quantity, displacement is a vector quantity. That is the first difference between distance and displacement. The next one is that for distance, the nature of the path followed by the object matters. For displacement, only the initial and the final points matters. The nature of the path doesn't matter at all. Right. So with this, I will conclude my uh, topic on this uh, path length and displacement so that we can go ahead and talk about uh, some other quantities as well. So, so far in motion, what do we see? In order to describe motion, we need position. And in order to describe position, in order to describe the position of an object, we take help of these two quantities, path length and displacement. Because path length and displacement actually take, tells us how much total distance or how much total path has been covered by the object in a specific period of time, right? I hope you found the video useful. Do let us know your feedback in the comment section. We will be glad to hear from you. In the next video, we are going to talk about speed and velocity. So stay tuned.